the heat is on uh, as far as the uh, presidential campaign conversations are concerned. And there are more conversations on the character and quality of those seeking the number one city in Nigeria. Yesterday, we had a chieftain of the APC and the former governor of Edo State, Mr. Adams Oshamale, where he spoke about um, the PDP presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar. Tonight, the PDP will be responding to some of the statements made by Mr. Oshamale. But for those of you uh, who couldn't catch that, well, the episode is on our YouTube page. You can watch the whole episode. But let me allow you to at least to give a background to what Senator Dino Melaye, uh, our spokesperson of the PDP presidential campaign organization, will be speaking to. Take a listen to Comrade Adam Oshamale on the program yesterday. So if five people have reason to question the character of Atiku Abubakar, that you can't trust his word, that he can't even manage his own party, he can't grant concessions, he's so fixated about certain things, he's totally insensitive to Project Nigeria, the need to keep Nigeria together. He could go to a place like Kaduna and speak to a part of the country and say, don't vote for a Yoruba man. He didn't say don't vote for Tinubu, but that's a huge difference. You might say don't vote for Tinubu, but we say don't vote for a Yoruba man. I said these people who call themselves ethnic nationalities, don't vote for Yoruba, don't vote for an Igbo man, the Igbo nation. So because the man is Igbo, it doesn't matter. The fact of being Igbo makes him unelectable. A man who seeks to govern Nigeria has said this publicly on record. How can you trust him? You can't manage your household. You are a Syria divorcee. And you want to preach unity, family unity to me? No, that's not that. Well, that's uh, a clip a part of what uh, uh, Comrade Adams of Shemale said yesterday. Senator Dino Malai, thank you so much indeed for coming tonight. Thank you very much. Um, first, I will start by saying that uh, Oshomale is a victim of untamed um, is a victim of his own untamed um, tongue. And I'm surprised that um, Oshomole is yet to learn his lessons from what his unbridled tongue um, have cost him, including the disgraceful, shameful, humiliating, and unceremonious exits as national chairman of um, the APC. Before I go any further, I want to state unequivocally that the quotes on what um, Atiku Abubakar, according to him, purportedly said in Kaduna, is not true. Atiku Abubakar didn't make that statement, and there was no where, where Atiku Abubakar was talking about ethnic nationalities. Those are just bare parlor streets um, talks that uh, he has catapulted into um, uh, political relevance. To start with... So uh, what did Abubakar, Atiku Abubakar say? Atiku Abubakar said that there should be no ethnic or religious coloration to politics. He started by saying, I am a pan-Nigerian. A man who, starts, who started his statement by saying, I'm a pan-Nigerian, cannot, in the middle of his statement, now begin to segregate or show some colorations. I will not want to dwell on that. Rather, I want to say that the issue, um, the, the very unpredictable statement by Adam Soshimoli on um, Atiku Abubakar is actually very disappointing. Uh, not too disappointing coming from him, because even on popular prostitutes uh, in those states, no Adam Soshimole to be one of their popular customers. What because what I'm saying in essence is that Adam Soshimole is suffering from what I call CGR. CGR means chronic genital recklessness, and his own is garnished, his own is garnished with matrimonial rascality. Because if you go to the social media today, there is a video of his genital organ sent all over the social media. A so a man, a man, he, he attacked Atiku personally. So, and I'm saying that a man with this type of moral decay have no moral grounds to come to a respected studio like this and begin to disparage a nationalist, a philanthropist, a statesman, a former vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He's coming to defend what is not defendable. He's coming to campaign. Because I've said this on this platform before, that it is impossible, Shun, for you to campaign for APC without looking stupid. It's not, it's not possible. Who is he trying to defend? He's trying to defend Bola Ahmed Tinubu? And he's talking, he's saying that Atiku is a serial um, divorcee. Atiku is married to Titi Atiku, his first wife. 
That marriage is over 50 years. And they are still together. Happy and together. And you are now trying to defend a man like Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Who ha you have Shade's mother. You have Sheyi's mother. You have Jide's mother. You have Abibat and Zainab. Those are the children of uh, Remy Tinubu. Five children from four women. And out of these five children, only out of these five children, only two are known. Only Shade and the Sheyi are known. Out of these four women, the only one that you can that we know is Remy Tinubu. Others are mysteriously hidden somewhere we have, we have no record of them. Atiku Abubakar as an individual. You read his biography, you read his autobiography, you read his history. If you read it 40 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, he's still talking about the same person. You can identify his classmates, you can read about the school he attended, you can read about where he's from, Jada. There's no controversy about Atiku Abubakar, but everything, everything about Bola Ahmed Tinubu is controversial, mysteriously controversial. Atiku has no controversy surrounding anything around him. Because he and mentioned... as I speak with you... Yeah. So as... the aspect of where... And, and the most important... Just... Let, me, let me wrap up this thought before, please, so that you, uh, I don't get distorted. And the most shameful aspect of it is that Bola Ahmed Sinobu's mother died a few years ago because of shame, because he's ashamed of himself, because he, have, he, he, has, he, 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 he has identity problem. He could not attend his own mother's burial. Is that the kind of character you show? These are, you these show, are, these are you, you show, it's not personal. You show personal. as a Nigerian. These are a man who is not mentally or physically fit, is not complying with the provision of the Constitution of Nigeria 1999 as amended, because the Constitution has said for you to be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, you need to be physically and mentally fit. Is you that know, you? Will you hire Tinubu? I, I will not, you hire Tinubu as I, an employer? I would not like us to dwell on personal issues. Uh, what Nigerians are bothered about today is the character and the quality, the capacity of those who are wishing and, and that is what we are analyzing. to lead. That's what we are you know, analyzing. I wouldn't want us to dwell no, that's what we are on, 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 on personality you know, I'm trying to and tell personal you attacks. That a it's not personal attack. I'm trying to tell you that Tiku Abubakar is mentally fit, is physically fit. There's no controversy surrounding him. Nobody have accused Atiku Abubakar to be a drug baron. Nobody have accused him of being a consumer of drugs. He has not gone to any restaurant and begin to use languages that, sh that, 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 uh, that, that manifest advanced dementia. Even today, just today, he was in, uh, was in uh, Bielsa. He still goofed again in Bielsa, talking about the federal development of Nigeria. I mean, this type of comments that showed a lot of uh, mental disorders and, I mean, psychotic uh, factors should be, oh, 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 uh, it's only in Nigeria. Right. Will APC, now. with a kind of manifestation of satanism, of wickedness, of killing, of kidnapping, of poverty, of hunger, will have the temerity to come out and ask for vote? Not only ask for vote, then they will have the audacity to attack a man who is stable, who is mentally and physically stable, who is experienced, who have all it takes to move us out of the woods and out of the dundrum. Only a man like Oshomoli will support the likes of Eftinubu no, and so speak for him. L l let's dwell on the issues, perhaps. These are the issues that brought up the, these conversations and, the, and some of those uh, traits of personalities that have cropped up in the last uh, 24 hours. But now, one major issue that came up is what the candidates have to bring to the table to lead this country. And one of the questions that was raised is the agenda of Bola Tinubu in wanting to lead this country. And perhaps his visit to Baramotu Kingdom, for example, in the Niger Delta region of the country. And he has said that his candidate has approached them and promised them to alleviate their sufferings when he gets to office. Does your candidate, for example, have uh, the love and the plan for these people who are perhaps, when they were speaking, they, they spoke about how much they've been neglected and how much their plight has been uh, sidelined uh, side and they were not, their side had not been looked into. Now, what is the plan of Atiku Abubakar to the issues in the Niger Delta, to the Ijo people of the Baramoto Kingdom that spoke up? That's one of the issues that raised the controversies. I, I, I understand what you're saying, and I want to tell you this, that you cannot even be quoting APC 
of quoting um, Bola Ahmed Tinubu if you are talking about the future of this country, if you are talking about the independence of this country, if you are talking about economic, political, and social revival of this country. You cannot be talking about them because to start with, a leader must be coherent. A leader must be mentally and physically okay. A leader must be able to comprehend the problems of this country and defer solutions to them. With the manifestation, I repeat again, with the manifestation of advanced dementia, APC have no solution at all to the problems of this country. Coming back to Atiku Abubakar, Atiku Abubakar have developed a covenant with Nigerians, which he, he, he put up as a book, a, a small readable book called My Covenant with Nigerians. And in this covenant with Nigerians, he has articulated five major cardinal objectives and agenda. Speak to us about that, that for the one this, that relates for, for to this the, country. The, I'm, yeah, I'm, that I'm relates coming, specific, I'm coming, No, I'm just remember, because I had this, I asked a specific I'm question coming there. I'm on coming the there. Baramoto people. I'm coming and this there. Was, Since it's not a jam question. Yeah. You, don't, you, don't, you expect me to lay a foundation. No, because Nigerians don't want to be confused. Because we're, not, we're not confusing one of, them. One of, just one of the agenda for us as journalists that we will not allow politicians to confuse the issues for the people of this country. We, are not, we, are we not will one, make sure that the confused. issues are treated and they are hit on the nail. Yeah. One of the issues which I will raise a few others in the course of this conversation is that for those people in the Niger Delta region, they've talked about spillage, they, they talked about pollution, they've talked about a whole lot of the poverty level in that part of the country. Does your candidate have a plan for this set of people. Yeah, before, before you in, interjected, I was flowing to that direction. And I want to tell you this, that if you take up a look at our agenda, no political party or presidential candidate have a robust solution to the problem of the Niger Delta like Atiku Abubakar. Because you know why? He understands the problem. Having sat in the vantage position of a vice president of the Republic of Nigeria, up in issue, who actually work towards the creation of the Ministry of Niger Delta. It's Atiku Abubakar. It was his blueprint. It was his own personal blueprint that gave birth to the Ministry of Niger Delta and the, NDD, the issue of NDDC and all that. So, to start with, this man who initiated the process for the creation of attention for the people of Niger Delta when he was vice president cannot become president and become alien to that problem. The issue of oil spillage is there addressed. The issue of poverty is there. And through restructuring, is the only presidential candidate that is talking about restructuring of the country today. Through restructuring, host communities will definitely benefit and enjoy their natural resources and endowment. Atiku have also proposed some constitutional amendments. He has put up together constitutional, the best, one, best set of constitutional lawyers in this country who have proposed, I mean, as on as he's becoming president by the grace of God, he is going to have initiate constitutional amendments that will give meaningful life to the people of the Niger Delta. And not only giving a meaningful life to the people of the Niger Delta, Atiku have said it in different forums. That the IOCs, the relationship between the IOCs and the host community will be looked at. The issue of, like I said, not only the issue of spillage, even the issue of pollution in, in, in entirety will be looked at. The economic and social relevance of the people of the Niger Delta, where they will have a say in the resource that is leaving their communities, will be looked at. All this is embedded in, the, in, in, in that book called My Covenant with Nigerians. Right. And I'm assuring you that Atiku will not give lip service because Atiku understands the problems. We're not saying just come and talk. Into, no, 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 no. In practicality. So let's, uh, let's look at another angle. Part of the question that I raised is, can we get a president that Nigerians can trust that will further unite, not divide this country. Yeah. And that's perhaps the question mark that Mr. Shomali raised on the character of your candidate when he says he cannot be trusted. And he brought up the relationship between himself and his former principal, 
President Olusha Gombasanjo, and he brought to the bear the question about the five governors in the PDP and perhaps the division in the People's Democratic Party. He said, according to Mr. Shomale, that Atiku cannot be trusted. How do you respond anyway, to that? I will start by saying that instead of Oshomale talking about what they can do as a government, instead of him quoting, he was, he was dumping into domestic issues. As, and he was, he was quoting and talking as if he's quoting the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Number one, look at it. Atiku is the most trusted presidential candidate of all the 18 presidential candidates we have in these 2023 elections. The West are comfortable with that, Atiku. Southerners are comfortable with it. The Aosa Fulani, the Ejols, it. Everybody is comfortable with Atiku Abubakar because it's not only a pan-Nigerian. No, even witches and wizards cannot accuse him of being a religious bigot or an ethnic jingoist. Because we all know, everyone in this country knows Atiku Abubakar. Does he have what it takes as to, I speak with to you, unite as I speak with you, As I speak with you, Atiku Abubakar done his, his quest to get a ticket of the PDP, went to every part of this country and he was welcomed. And Atiku is the only presidential candidate who got votes from every zone of this country. Tinubu could, did not even visit the entire Southwest and Southeast. He didn't go to any of the states in the Southeast when he was going around seeking for the ticket of his country. Go to the core North and say Tinubu, nobody knows who Tinubu is. Go to the Southeast. Go to Umuleri, go to Aguleri, go to Inewi. They don't know who Tinubu, who Tinubu is. So the only nationalist who has friend, he's got friends in every nook and cranny of this uh -huh. country, and by the virtue of having been vice president, no, have, have contacts, information, with every part of this country is Atiku Abubakar. Let me, this and one, that is yeah. why it's not for form that we call him the unifier. And talking about the five governors, I don't know why Adam Soshomole is taking Panadol for another person's edict. The crisis in APC is not only an issue of five governors. If Adams Oshomole knows the kind of conversation that is going on with big goals of his party, he will retire to a sick home and take treatment. All right. So the problem in APC the, is too gargantuan. But I want to assure you that even the issue of the five governors is mentioning, it will be disgraced and they will be put to shame. Because I know that between now and the next one month, our party is going to come together as one. All right. And efforts have been made for us to come. It's just a minor misunderstanding. On, it, is not, it has no effect on our elections. Senator, let's wrap this up. Yes. And this is the same question I, I, I threw at uh, uh, Comrade Adams of Shomale yesterday. Yes. That if you have 30 seconds to sell your candidate to Nigerians, millions of them who are watching right now, mm -hmm. what makes him the best candidate for the job in 2023, what would you say? I will tell them that our economic problem, our security problem, is all tied to hunger, poverty, and unemployment. And only a private sector-driven economy can give us a solution. Today, Atiku is a billionaire with enterprise. Tinubu is a billionaire without enterprise. Atiku is a giant, a captain in the private sector. So he is the only one that has the capacity and capability to create an enabling environment for the private sector to thrive in this country. And he has the connection with the presidents of our neighboring country to tame all our security problems. Mm. Atiku is a, was trained by the police right. before he got into the right. customs. Senator, we are, we are totally out of time. But I, I mean, there has been a lot of conversation about uh, what Oshomale said, that perhaps what he meant was not Atiku as a personal, as a divorcee <laughs> in a personal family life, as someone who had politically left other political party. That was and, perhaps and, what and, he and, was. And quickly, I will tell was, you. Quickly, I tell you. No, quickly, I will tell you that he yeah. lied. Tinubu moved from APP to AC. 
AC to ACN, ACN to, uh, to APC. So he has moved to three, four, five parties. Yesterday he was saying on this program that Tinubu has not changed party. He has moved from APP to AC, AC to ACN, ACN to APC. So the issue of right. moving party is not an answer. It so is in his quest to solve the Nigerian question. Thank and Atiku so Abubakar is pulled apart. He's comparing light and darkness when you talk Senator, of Tinubu thank you and so Atiku Abubakar. Senator Dino Melai, thank you so much. Thank you. The pleasure is mine. Coming. The, the same problem, no time. <laughs> Even if it's two hours, there will be time. <laughs> but thank you so much for your right of reply and your response. Thank you so much. Indeed.